Welcome back, Burn. It's like, I didn't even see you. <laughs> like, I know, right? It's like, what? You were there, then you're still there. <laughs> Oh man! But now let's get into the let's get into the positives. I know last episode we were talking about without remorse, and we were both nitpicking at it. I was trying to be optimistic as much as I could have, just because you know the shame, shame, I, <laughs> whatever. I don't give a shit. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's fine, Burn. You know you're just you're a monster. Just just own it. You know, lean into it. Um, but now let's talk about. One of the best shows to start off this year. Like, uh, yeah, start off. Let's just talk about it that way. Yeah, I guess And so. that is Robert Kirkman slash Amazon's Invincible. Mm -hmm. And I remember I kind of heard about this show a little bit before it came out. Uh, my friend was telling me about it, and I was like, eh, looks okay. I don't know how I feel about an animated superhero show. Like, it's just, I'm kind of right. over it. Because we've had Falcon Winter Soldier, WandaVision, The Boys... And I just was like, I'm a little superheroed out. I thought I was kind of reaching my fatigue with that. Right. Um, but fuck that, dude. I'm so <laughs> glad I hopped onto this. This was such a great show. Yeah. They dropped the first three episodes, uh, which we talked about a couple yep. weeks we back. We did talk about that. For like our mid-season review slash overview. And if you haven't and seen that, go check it out to see what our early thoughts were. Because did they change much? I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I, I really liked it. There was a couple episodes that were a little... Uh, on the slow side, but honestly, this ending was so crazy. It was so, it's such a fucked up show, but in the best way. Yeah. Especially because it's an animated show. So you can get away with it because it's not, it's not like the boys. You're seeing hardcore violence in person, which is, can be a little hard to swallow sometimes. This was, I mean, even then, the first episode popped off to a fucking high degree. <laughs> Literally <laughs> popped off. Well, yeah. Like, oh my God, it was so gruesome. But, um, Let's just talk about spoilers right now. But I, I'm going to give this show a hard five out of five. No questions asked. A plus, plus, plus. Because I kind of like doing the letter review after without remorse. So I'm still on that a little bit. But <laughs> five like out of five. It's, it's, you know, the, the U.S. education system has really uh, made us want to uh, do the letter grades. <laughs> but um, I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know what, man? I am inclined to agree with you. This show was amazing from start to finish. I know you did say that there were some, you know, uh, some not not so great parts. I don't think it was that. I think they were just, you know, a little bit slower. And yeah. I think within those slow moments, they really utilized their time and and building a lot of character moments, which I thought were great. You know, I thought I think that this show really succeeds in the same way that the boys does, where you could easily get lost in the gratuitous violence, where that could just be the only thing you do, and you can lean into that, and that can be the thing that defines your show. But what they do instead, on top of that, is give you really good characters and really give really good character moments, and they're all written so well. So it really elevates the violence when it does happen. So this is so funny that both of these shows are on Amazon and they're very similar in that way. And I will say as of right now that it's Invincible is probably my favorite show of the year so far. And I will agree with you on that 5 out of 5 A++ plus plus rating. I went eight, I went three pluses, so you're already behind on that one. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> With A++++. Plus 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 plus. There you go. Ah. No, you can't add another plus. You're already done. <laughs> but... Yeah, uh, okay, let's just hop into the spoiler session now because I, I can't wait to talk about my favorites of this this uh, show. Absolutely. So again, guys, you haven't watched it, please check it out. I, I am begging people to watch this show. I am trying to convince a, as many people as I can to watch this show. Because this is such under the radar. Nobody's talking about it unless you're watching it, and I don't know how. It's one of the best freaking shows I've, I've seen, and that's that's a lot of shows I've watched, mm -hmm. so I can't get enough of it. And, and it just got greenlit for two more seasons. Robert yes. Kirkman announced that, so I'm fucking psyched. Yep. Very but let's hop. But let's hop into the spoilers, Burn. <laughs> Invincible. Ah, uh, so like I said, the very first episode, how that hooked me, and I kind of remember just thinking, like, what the fuck am I watching right now? Just because <laughs> the first episode was pretty beat for beat, you know? Yeah. Kid's a little low very on standard. himself. Yeah, dad's a superhero, one of the, the superheroes, basically the Superman, who played by J.K. Simmons, who's such a, a well-versed actor. Oh, I don't absolutely. know. Has he won? A, he hasn't won an Oscar, huh? He, he did. He won for Whiplash, oh, Best Supporting okay, Actor. Okay, good. Well, well deserved. he deserves it. He needs a Best Actor. Just He needs an Emmy. He needs a Gold Globe. Whatever earns this uh, for it, he needs everything. <laughs> if you have to make just... up an award, 
stupid <laughs> to give it to this guy. <laughs> Seriously, he did such a good job. And it has Steven Yoon, Lauren Cohen. Um, Steven Yoon is a the character Invincible, who's uh, J.K. Simmons' son. Mm-hmm. and Who's also now, as of now, Oscar nominated. You know, he didn't win the best yeah. actor Oscar, but he's an Oscar nominated actor. You know, he's, he's, after leaving The Walking Dead, he's done such a great job in his career. And I want to keep seeing him go higher, man. Steven oh, Yeun, absolutely. keep up the good work. And the, the first episode, again, he gets his superpowers, learns to be a superhero, gets his uniform, like his suit, right at the end of it. And then, nope, there's a little extra thing in there where the, the Guardians of the Globe, the Justice League ripoff of this universe, mm-hmm. gets brutally murdered by Omni-Man, which took me by fucking surprise. Because yep. I, yeah, this was a little violent throughout the show but nothing like this this no. set the tone for the whole freaking season where it was funny because like the, the flash rip off the rush red rush who mm-hmm. was like a russian character he he talks about to his wife how you know because he's so fast every, every conversation he has with somebody even a minimal react uh, interaction feels like ages just it takes forever for him because mm-hmm. he's so fast so when omni-man crushes his head in where his eyeballs popping out and he's just punching his chest just basically breaking his hands to his hands are just mush at that point and it's just oh man i just kept thinking like dude you are this is a slow death for him and that is horrifying to think about and everybody just gets fucked up you know uh dark wing the batman guy he (laughs) just gets uh, splattered (laughs) yeah he kind of like the the hulk smash (laughs) he gets thrown around and then yeah just thrown into the green ghost and her head gets punched through and the the Aquaman character is like a giant talking fish. He's just <laughs> yeah. blowing water at her corpse, using it as a shield. And I'm like, God damn, this is fucked up. That and poor then, guy too, because you know before that he was just like sitting in his throne, like underwater, just bored. Like you could tell, like this was the only thing he ever looked forward to. And then he just gets destroyed. Like oh. the Martian character gets his heart ripped out. That was pretty gruesome. Not that gruesome. He actually got a simpler death than the rest of them. Um, and then War Woman gets her head gets you know her head twisted all the way around. The vomiting blood at the very end of that was like just ha, huh, and then dies. It's like oh no, oh my god, War Woman. <laughs> and then Immortal, who's like the other Superman character, gets fucking his hand punched, his gut punched in. Literally, mm-hmm. his hand is all the way through his gut, and then chopped his head off. Mm-hmm. It was like that. That hooked me in. That was easily my still favorite fight scene throughout this whole show i that was i i can't get enough of it and it's so gruesome to watch but yeah it's just it uh it's not something that's you know just specific to this one scene but i would attribute it to all the action sequences in this show that are really well done they're really well animated and on top of that the sound design is something that's so well done like that that's that's one of the things that really we don't think about you know, with a lot of, especially with a lot of animated shows that don't really put too much emphasis on the sound design, but in this show in particular, and they really do, they do put a lot of emphasis in that, and then just add to the action sequence when you can hear every bone crunching when someone gets hit. It's just, it just adds so much more realism and a lot of like tension to the sequences when our heroes are involved because we're actually afraid for them, and that's one of the cool things that Robert Kirkman has done. Not not just in this series, but you know he did, he has also done it in The Walking Dead, where at any given moment we feel like our heroes could, you know, meet their end, and that's something that yeah. we don't really get a lot in the superhero genre. No, and honestly, with the superhero genre, you you really you rarely ever think about the collateral damage with heroes and mm-hmm. like fighting villains or otherworldly creatures. This show put that on blast, and it oh, was yeah. horrifying to watch. Like the boys has some uh, collateral damage, and you know there, there there's some citizens that die in like everything and all the shows and movies, but nothing to this gravity. And it was just so such a just it just really makes you think like God damn, I'm kind of glad we don't live in a world with superheroes. Like, yeah, it, it's it's almost like a it's I like how like again just how the violence is used in the show. Like in the second episode, well now that Invincible has assumed his mantle and you know he has this very you know, rose tinted view of what being a superhero is. And when those aliens invade and just start massacring people, he can he can only do so much. He can't save everybody. You really see that start to weigh on him. And that's something that 
you know, it's a, it's a through line of the season of him having to come to grips with, you know, being a superhero isn't this glamorous thing in this universe. It's, you know, there there is a, a toll that it takes on innocence. And we don't see that, you know, explained much better than that second episode. And then this last episode where him and uh, Omni-Man are, well, not fighting. He's just getting beat to shit by his own father. And, yeah, that and, was a hard part watching it today. I was like, oh my god, he's really gonna kill his son. Yeah, and just the the civilian toll like that we see throughout the fight is it's just so brutal and gruesome, and it just makes you kind of like you know you know recoil and just be like, whoa, this is this is kind of messed up. It was very messed up. Um, but yeah, so and I know we're harping on the violence. I just went through a whole you know awe moment with the the, the death scene of the guardians, but. Honestly, that's not even the main point of the show. Like you said, Burn, the mm-hmm. character development with Steven Yeun's character, J.K. Simmons, is like we're seeing who he really is, what Omni Man's real duty to the world is, mm-hmm. and and what else? And you just kind of see other interactions with other heroes, like especially like the teen team, and then the new Guardians, and how they're built up from stuff, and and even the villains themselves. We see that there are a couple gray area villains, and then we also see some villains that are just messed up people um but yeah it had a lot of fun with that and it really is just a a character show it is based on them and the voice cast does such a phenomenal job of portraying the animation like because you can because the animation looked great but if you don't have a strong cast behind it you're not going to really buy into it that much absolutely and this one i I was sucked into it, man. Every yeah, episode. I'll go as far as to say this is one of the best voice casts in anything. You know, video games, you know, TV shows, cartoons. This this cast just knocked it out of the park. Everyone plays their roles so well. And this, you know, the the our title characters, you know, the Invincible and Omni Man and uh, his mom and his mom. Yeah, played by Sandra Oh, um, Debbie. You know, they give her so much to do, and I'm so glad that her story serves as sort of the B plot to this this whole season, where she's investigating. You know, she knows something's wrong. You know, something's off with her husband, and she she goes and investigates. It isn't one of those things where you know, oh, she's just the wife. You know, we're not really going to pay too much attention to her. It's 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 the opposite of that. Her story is really sad and really tragic, and it just it, it's so interesting that we got that. Usually we don't get that, and no, she's not stories. like an aunt. She's not like an Aunt May character or something in like the movies and shows where she's just kind of there for bits of words of wisdom. She is there because she's a real human being. She is, you know, trying to figure out what's going on with her husband and being there for her son. And she's she's no dummy. She did figure out what happened. Mm-hmm. She just couldn't put all the pieces together until this last episode. And this last episode was such a great way to end it. Um, you know, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't get over it. I hear a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> There's a big puppy. My dog is sleeping somewhere being aloof. But anyways, um, yeah, but before we finish up with this episode, give me your, what are your top three or five, give me your top five moments in this one, in this I, series. Okay. I mean, I think, you know, the, the beginning, uh, at massacre i will call it is 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 probably you know definitely up there so you know i'm gonna see if i can like think of five other ones because that one is just so prominent but (laughs) that one's up that one's up there with me so that's our number one (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah, i mean that one that one's great um i really like the the conversation that mark has with his mom debbie when he's coming into his powers yeah i think this is also in the first episode too yeah uh where you know he has that moment of like you know he's really thinking about you know what this means like the legacy of you know wanting to be like his father and better and then really just coming to terms with that and she does a good job of grounding him telling him you know like it used to be just you and me like you know talking about this sort of thing so i thought that moment was really great between the two of them and i mean the 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 moment at the the end the end of the 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 season where you know omni man is just really really taking his own son to town and like this whole time he's been lying to not only his family but the world about what his real intentions are which is what i you know what we kind of like thought was the case where he's not this like savior he's a conqueror yep and you know him just taking mark you know around the world and just beating the crap out of him the whole time telling 
telling him how insignificant life was was just something so hard to see and just you know capped off by that moment where he tells where he's yelling at mark why did you make me do this you know after 500 years you know what's going to be left you know who are you going to have here and mark you know beating him to a pulp just says i'll have you I oh, thought that was such a great moment. And we see the conflict within Ani Man, how he feels like he has this duty. But also we do see that, you know, the world has had a little bit of effect on him. So I thought that moment was really great, too. And, oh, man, I'm trying to think. There's just so many. <laughs> there's, just, there's just so many good moments. I mean, I really like um, uh, the the scenes where... Where, uh, what's her, what's her name? Uh, Adam Eve, where Adam Eve, you know, decides to break away from her family and do superheroing on her own, where she's going around the world and correcting all these, all these wrongs that are happening, where she's kind of going on her own journey. I thought that was really great too, because she has the power to manipulate matter at an atomic yeah. level. Like her power set is ridiculous. She's so, basically a female Dr. Manhattan. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's essentially what she was doing. And, and they don't, they don't really harp on it too much, but I, there were some times I'm like, dude, she's like a god level hero right now. I don't know why she's just kind of like, mm-hmm. I mean, why? she's doing she's doing what she needs to do, but yeah, like I'm, you feel like she was being held back by the team team. <laughs> absolutely, yeah, she was held back. Like again, this is somebody who's manipulating matter at her own will. But mm. okay, um, and then, then just the last two, well, I'll probably say you know just be quick about it. Uh, was the you know the scene where uh, Mark takes on uh, the alien uh, played by Seth Rogen? I forget the character's name, but you Alan. Think, yeah, Alan. There you go, Alan. Alan you, the you, alien. Yeah. You think it's gonna be like this real knockdown drag fight, and it's really just like a, oh, you know, it's just a little conversation on the moon, and they had a really like good interaction. So I really like that. And then the lead up uh, to the last episode, you know, the episode seven, where Cecil is just throwing everything in the kitchen sink and trying to like even <laughs> slow down on him and i thought that was just so great to see like this guy it really is an unstoppable force i'll i'll go through mine quick um so like i said the ma- like you said the massacre of the guardians this that mass murder um episode two an army man just goes to that alien planet oh, and yes. just massacres them as well basically destroys that population to nothing mm-hmm. um Number three, hold on. It's when Debbie re- figures out that Omni Man killed uh, the Guardians. The, yeah, the Guardians. Hey, puppy. Um, oh my God! Hold on, hold on. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think here. <laughs> um, honestly, this is a super weird thing, but I really like when they created the new Guardians and uh, the and Robot was picking out the characters just because I like seeing oh, the other yeah. heroes in this universe. It kind of gave me an insight of like, you know. What what can this world lead to? So I kind of hope we see other heroes throughout the next couple seasons that really come into light. Just because there were some cool character designs behind that. Like there was oh, one yeah. like Amazonian looking girl who's like big, buff, pretty, has like a dinosaur skull as a shoulder pad. Um, and then, you know, Monster Girl was really cool. Black Samson with his armor was dope. So I just really like seeing that episode and kind of see more of the animation and how the, everybody's fighting and what they can do. And then the the fourth one is yeah I would say when Cecil's just trying to uh, trying to stop Omni Man or just trying to play around with him trying to slow him down and he's just teleporting right around him mm-hmm. and then at the very last second just he gets his ties like oh my god that was close yeah. like a little too close for comfort and then my favorite actually yeah my favorite one the last one is gonna be the very end where you know. Kind of a mix of when Omni Man really gets upset with his son, almost like when a, like a dad just lashes out, like gets upset or something, and then blames the kid for doing it. And it's like it was your fault, like you know mm-hmm. you took your shit out on your kid, so you know take a step back. And that's exactly what he did. And then, um, and then Alan's just like, oh, so what are you gonna do now? And we see a whole preview of where the the show is yep, gonna all go. the plot threads. Just, all these dropped. all these villains, some of the heroes, and it's just like, I'm going to graduate high school. It's like, oh, that's good. What's high school? What's high school? <laughs> Perfect end cap to the season. Perfect ending. Oh, my God. I, I can't wait for season two. I'm gonna, this is going to be a season I'm going to binge watch again. Just rewatch it all. I mean, it's a show that I've been rewatching episodes as they, as they come. Like, I, it's just so enjoyable to go back to. Absolutely, man. But uh, is there anything else you want to shout out for this burn? Or, or do you think we've kind of cover the bases we need to cover oh man i mean i can gush about this show for like hours on hours so i'll just say it you know leave it at robert kirkman and seth rogan and uh adam goldberg i believe it is 
yeah. that are the you know the creative heads uh, behind the show. I think they've done such a great job, and I'm so glad that they got two more seasons at the very least to continue this story because I'm very excited to see where this goes. I'm hoping it could. I mean, depending on the plot and how that goes, I could see this going for at least like five or six. Because there's a lot of uh, Invincible out there. I'm tempted to get the omnibuses now and mm -hmm. just start reading those. Kind of like Walking Dead. Because Robert Kirkman did The Walking Dead and Invincible. And the graphic novel is better than the show. Like for Walking Dead. I'd rather read that than ever watch the show again. So I'm, I don't know if Invincible will be the same way. I kind of hope not. But I'll, from what the critics have been, I've been seeing what they said, this show improves a lot from the books too. Like mm -hmm. everything Robert Kirkman kind of like may not have succeeded well, he's changed it up for the better in this. So... Yeah. I'm curious to still read them. Definitely. But I think that'll be it, man. Everybody, like I said, I know we've focused on a couple things in the spoiler session, but it's just, it gets me so excited. I don't know what to talk about because it's all so good. Mm -hmm. So I definitely recommend you guys to check it out as soon as you can. If you have Amazon, again, it, it's all on. The first season's yep. all on. There are eight it. episodes. Not even that long. It's a pretty quick binge. So watch it. Absolutely. That's all I can say. Yeah, because if, if you take everything away from this, if, you know, from the spoiler section, that hopefully you saw the show and stayed for. But maybe if you didn't, you know, maybe we got you inside excited. But as much as we described it, it's a different thing watching it. It's so good. Absolutely. But again, burn. I think we should adjourn, and uh, I can't wait for. Oh, man, I don't know what else is coming out soon. Again, we got Army of the Dead coming out in a few weeks, which I can't wait for. I keep watching that trailer on repeat. Hopefully it won't be like Without Remorse. It does have Zack Snyder behind <laughs> it. So <laughs> if it has Zack Snyder behind it, so I'm sure I'll like it in some uh, either way. Yeah. All right, dude. I'll, I'll talk to you later. And everybody, you know, keep, keep ranting and uh, stay bodacious as always. Absolutely. Watch the show, folks. And if you have, let us know what you thought about. Absolutely. I'll talk to you later, bro. See you.